Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Tuesday, October 6th, 2015. And here are some of today's trends in the news. Well, let's begin with the markets. Over there in Asia, it was kind of like that. Shanghai's not going so high lately. Remember, they were going to get over 4,500 before you could blink an eye. Didn't happen. Guess they're not blinking enough over there because Shanghai's doing nothing. And Europe is kind of like that here in the States as well. Must be on the good news that the IMF, that's right, they're at it again. They trimmed their expected global growth. How many times do they have to give a haircut to their forecasts? What they said now is that global growth for 2015 is projected at 3.1%. But in April, let's see, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, yeah, six months ago, it was going to grow at 3.5% a year. Hey, but the year's not over. Maybe they'll downgrade it again. So on that good news, Earl prices, woof! Wow, are they up today? Yep, both Brent and crude on the news of slowdown in a global economy. Well, that can't be right, because here's what happened. Global demand will grow by the most in six years, according to the uh, U.S. Energy Information, Administra- Energy Information Administration. Huh. I guess they're wrong. Somebody's wrong here because if you're looking at a slowdown in growth, how could oil prices go up because of increased demand going way up in six years, the highest in six years? So somebody's wrong over here. But the other reason oil prices went up was Tighter oil supplies next year, while Russia, Saudi Arabia, and other big producers hinted of further talks to support the market. And the rig count over here in the USA went down by 26 rigs. But hey, how about Iran? What if Iran starts coming in and pumping out more oil? So anyway, oil prices are up. The market went up a little bit. And gold went up too. Also on the good news in the USSA, hey, remember Obama, among his other uh, things that he said that didn't come true? He was going to double the amount of exports the United States sent to foreign countries. That's right. Well, trade deficit ballooned to $48.3 billion last month. And, you know, who our biggest deficit was with? China. Yep, $33 billion. Hey, isn't that the Clintons? Let's thank the Clintons for that. Round of applause for all those politicians that sold us out. Don't worry, you get a job at McDonald's. You're going to get that $10 an hour before you know it. Walmart, you get everything's okay. Yep, manufacturing jobs gone. And the big news, of course, is Bernanke attacks Capitol Hill over crisis role. The former chairman of the Federal Reserve is hit out at Congress for failing to do its part to bolster America's rebound from the financial crisis. <laughs> former Fed Chair Ben Bernanke is out there selling his book. The book's name is The Courage to Act. The Act of a Coward. How about that for... I love these guys, man. The guy got a big job now, you know, in one of these big firms on Wall Street. And now he probably got a load of dough to sell his book. Yep. The Act of a Coward who sold us out by bailing out his buddies. And remember when I was getting criticized by the mainstream media and they did not want to hear it when I said that there was going to be the panic of 08, 
Well, guess what? They lied again. Well, they always do. Here he goes. In his newly published memoir, Ben Bernanke admitted the Fed had failed to spot some of the dangers building before the financial crash. Yeah, but boy, don't they get arrogant on how they're going to fix it. The ones that didn't see it coming lie that they said they saw it all the time and then do things that fix Zipola. Skepticism prevails on preventing crisis. This is from the Turlet paper yesterday. The 2008 financial crisis convinced most people in the world of central banking that it would be a good idea to try to prevent that kind of thing from happening again. Hey, you didn't see it coming. What are you going to prevent? They're preventing nothing. Hey, the markets are going up on the good news that last Friday, the job numbers stink. Labor force participation rate is at the lowest level since 1970s, when there weren't a lot of women as there are now in the workforce. So even comparing it to that number. And, of course, whoop, wages, no gain. And job hours worked, whoop, flat. So, you can see where this is going. The Fed has publicly committed itself to a strategy of so-called macroprudential regulation, meaning it now focused on maintaining the stability of the financial system as well as the health of individual firms. You got it? Individual firms. That's it. And who is Bernanke working for since leaving the Fed? The hedge fund Citadel. Isn't that swell? We got a criminal group running the show right in front of everybody's eyes. Japan's central bank chief weighs up policy easing options. They're into a recession. More Abenomics. And remember, they put the second round of Abenomics in on Halloween. Yeah, just about a year ago. Three days after the Fed announced they were cutting back the tapering. Chile dilutes reforms in face of plummeting copper prices. Oh yeah, there's going to be increased demand in oil next year, I told you. Yep. Growth in the world's top copper producer has fallen from an average of 5.3% over the past 30 years to 1.9% last year. And watch what happens this year. And on to some international news. Last night, I try not to do this so much because it upsets me. I watched the prostitutes on the mainstream media and this guy on Pelly, whatever his name is, on CBS. Here's what he said. Russian jets began bombing Syria last week to prop up the Assad dictatorship. How's that for propaganda? How's that for a low-life individual of a human being? How about calling him the democratically elected president of the country? That's right. Go back to June, a year ago, 2014. They had an election. There were 30 world observers at the polling places. They said it was a legitimate election, but Pelly says he's a dictatorship. Isn't that nice? The little boy just can't repeat the news without throwing the hate word in there. And for the people that watch that stuff and believe it, boop, it sinks into their brain. It's called brainwashing. And then the little man goes on. While the U.S. is targeting the terrorist army known as, you know what it is, ISIS. Yeah. Prostitutes. 
all over the place. And that's the news. Obama sees Russia failing in Syrian effort, one piece after another. Ankara warns Moscow to stay out of Turkish airspace. Yeah, but they could go in because they've been going in. But remember, Russia was invited in. These people are the ones that are going into Syrian airspace. But of course, Ankara warns Moscow to stay out of Turkish airspace when it went over the line a little bit. But it's okay for Turkey to go into Syrian airspace as it is okay for them to go into Iraqi airspace as it is for everybody to do what they want. Here's a story in today's Financial Times that's just totally disgusting. The language is for children and for prostitutes and to make complex issues simplistic for the simple-minded. Russia has stepped forcibly into the Syrian civil war that has confounded regional, you ready for this, and international <laughs> actors. Actors? Hollywood. Within Syria, the fighting pits a range of mostly Islamic factions against a series of players on the regime side. Actors and players. You got the language? The main Islamic and Kurdish groups cooperate, but both are opposed to the regime as well as to ISIS, the strongest insurgent force. On the regional front, a proxy war is raging in Syria with Iran on one side and the Sunni Gulf states on the other. The graphic on the right, they have a graph over here, maps out the main regional, you ready? And international actors, players and actors. Their attitude towards the forces on the ground and their relationships with each other. While all players share the same goal. Do you get this? Players and actors. And they call this news. And what they do is they take out of it the horror of what's really going on. The bloodshed. The millions of lives that are ruined by making it a comedy. And it's a comedy of fools. Hey, how about speaking of which, how about the United States bombing that hospital over there in Afghanistan? And one lie on top of another on how it happened. And they keep changing the story, changing the story. Could you imagine if Russia bombed a hospital in Syria? Woo! Hey, Pelly boy, that guy, whatever his name is on CBS, he'd really be blowing it out there, huh? But, hey, it's okay. The United States Doctors Without Borders exits Afghan city as fight worsens. U.S. generals said Afghan requested airstrikes. But of course, when you read the information, you have retired military people saying that, nah, quite not the fact. They said that you need people on the ground to be giving those demands in conclusions on where to bomb and who. And again, going back to Syria, who invited the Americans in there? What are they doing there? What are the French doing there? They're against international law. And you see it all the time, just keeps going. U.S. says Russia targets CIA-backed rebels in Syria. Who are these rebels? Can anyone show me a face of, quote, a moderate rebel? What do they look like? How come we have never seen them? I'll tell you why. Because they're actors. It's 
politics. It's show business for ugly people. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.